so that we can help those folks who are live streaming uh, who may not have had the benefit of supporting where they are. But we got work to do, we got worship uh, uh, to do. We invite you to stand as you will be joining our call to worship. Praise God, the assembly of the faithful. Make melody to God and sing a new song. Praise, Praise God for life in rich by love. Praise God for love that fulfills God's soul. 
This is the hour to wake from our sleep. The energy of God's love fills this place. Here we plant our energy as Christians. Here we become the church of Jesus Christ. Let us join together in opening prayer. Oh God, this is the day that we're remembering your faithfulness through the centuries. A time of celebrating your vibrant presence with us. A pause for anticipation for the season yet to be. We rejoice at the assurance that you take pleasure in us, that we are known by you, called by you, empowered by you to live honorably and humbly in the spirit of Christ. We will sing for joy, knowing that we can trust you for the guidance and direction we need. Amen. Our first hymn is a 591 Rescue Parish. in our lives that is harmful to ourselves and others, much that leads to brokenness and lasting pain. Let us confess our need for healing. Pray with me. O oh God, we have not been faithful to your commands. We have been more ready to condemn than to yourself, more eager to justify ourselves than to work our understanding. We feed the flames of the sin instead of welcoming the free power of forgiveness. God, turn us around to a new way of being. Amen. Let's take a moment to take our own petitions to God.
God's healing presence has come among us and dwells within us. Our openness to God's transforming love releases us in, in us the potential for wholeness. Amen. We come now to the time of uh, joys and concerns. We share them with one another and with God and just the speaking of them into the, into the congregation of the worship. Are there any that we want to lift up today? I talked to my sister-in-law who lives in Illinois, my, my brother's wife. She had to go to Florida this past week. Her best friend for since 1977, 75. Uh, unfortunately passed away in her house and didn't, nobody knew about it because she has no family down there and she was by herself and so she lingered in the house and passed away for about three days so my sister-in-law went down there and took care of the arrangements and had her cremation and sent it back to her but she's struggling really hard with this because of a friend who she could not help because she kept on her to the doctor and she wrote it. and I told her she can't control that but she says I, I just can't I don't want to she's struggling really hard with that. Well, I think that uh, every uh, death that I've ever been kind of a, a part of, it, there's been a little bit of guilt about something. Well, then she gets yeah. mad, and then she gets sad, and then she gets, so she vented with me for about an hour and a half yesterday on the phone. <laughs> you know, that's part of the process. But yes, the, it is. For uh, family who deals with the, the death of longtime friends, Lord, in your mercy, here. Except if y'all ever have Barbara and Kirk back. Yeah, Barbara and Kirk, I guess they've got their sea legs back, or land legs back, and they have their sea legs. Uh, they didn't bring any refreshments, though, from the ship. <laughs> but we're glad to have you back. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayers. And we get to participate in Billy's birthday party. Billy Green's birthday party, born and raised out here in this area, and uh, she turns uh, 97. Wow. So she's old enough to know better. <laughs> <laughs> Young enough not to care. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heal and mercy is for Belinda. She fell last Sunday morning and broke her foot in two places, and she had surgery, and there was more damage than what uh, the x ray initially showed. Now she has a plate in her foot, and I just, human mercies for her, it's going to be some time. All right, for Belinda, for uh, even for her uh, broken foot. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah our prayers. And thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for just the drops that you sent. I know there was a little dust, <laughs> but there was also a little wet for some of us. We, uh, we are grateful for whatever God sends and is going to send this week. It's a weatherman promise. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah. We have a birthday coming up this week. Warren is 97. Warren has a birthday. You still have it as Warren? Oh, I'm not any younger. <laughs> <laughs> sensation. <laughs> but uh, a person or two has uh, complained over the, uh, over the watch on the internet that they don't get to see everybody until the end of the service. And so we may turn that camera a little bit to show who's here so your relatives can check on you. <laughs> Any other? For for healing for Leon. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Let's take a moment to put ourselves in the presence of God. Lord of life. 
love and life we need to live. It seems our hearts have been so, heat has been so long and so dry. Be grateful for the land. It seems like obstacles have been so many. Can the desert teach us something? Can the wilderness give us strength in our faith? Send us manna so we can make it through. We pray for those who are hurt physically and spiritually. Give us something to say. <coughs> Give us something to do. Make us the bearers of light and life. We pray for the church. Don't let us forget. Don't let us forget the purpose which we have together. Keep us all moving in the same direction. We pray all this in Jesus' name and using Jesus' words when we say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's uh, hear from uh, Romans. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Don't be in debt to anyone except for the obligation to love each other. Whoever loves another person has fulfilled the law. The commandments, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't desire what others have, and any other commandments are all summed up in one word. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love doesn't do anything wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is what fulfills the law. As you do all this, you know what time it is. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep. Now, our salvation is nearer than when we first had faith. The night is almost over and the day is near. So let's get rid of the actions that belong to the darkness and put on the weapons of light. Let's behave appropriately as people who live in the day, not in partying and getting drunk, not in sleeping around and obscene behavior, not in fighting and obsession. Instead, dress yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and don't plan to indulge your selfish desires. This is the word of the Lord to the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our psalm is Psalm uh, 119, and it's verses 1 through 8, and then 33 through 48. We'll use the third response in the book. We already know it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Everybody now, let's just start. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep God's testimonies, who seek God with their own heart. Who also do no wrong, but walk in God's way. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Your statutes. 
needed. And let's join together in singing uh, the Grim My Cup Lord as we prepare for the gospel. From the Gospel of Matthew, as we continue in that uh, in that Gospel, in the 18th verse, 18th chapter, the 15th verse. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained one. But if you have not listened, take one or two others along with you so that every word might be confirmed by evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be as to you as a Gentile and tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I truly I tell you, if two of you, two of you agree in earth with anything that you ask, I will be done for you by the Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of God for people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, school has started. Even the people who started late in the year, uh, compared to when some started in August, uh, some started with Labor Day, but they're all started now. But I look around and I don't see anybody who's in school. I think it may have been a year or two <laughs> since you did that. So I want you to feel like you're that young again. So I want to give you something to write down. I never do this. I put pins at the end of the row in case you haven't got any. You can use the bulletin, the blank part, down on the back. But I really do want you to write this down. I want to give you two definitions. Okay? These are definitions of the church. First, the church is a voluntary association, spelling up now, of like-minded people regulated by rules, leaders, and votes. And the purpose is to take care of members. I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna go back over. Okay, now I'll take the church is a voluntary association of like-minded people regulated by rules, leaders, and votes. And, and the purpose is to take care of the members. Got that? Mm -hmm. No, sir. No, sir. All right. The church is a voluntary association of like minded people regulated by rules, leaders, and votes for the purpose of taking care of the members. Now I'm going to give you a second definition of the church. The 
church is made up of pillars. Called by God. Bound to Christ. With Jesus as the leader. purpose is to continue his ministry. To the least, the last, and the lost. One more time. The church is made up of pilgrims called by God, bound by Christ, with Jesus as the leader. Whose purpose is to continue his ministry to the least, the last, and the lost. One more time, please. One more time each. The first one is the church is a volunteer association of like minded people regulated by rules and leaders and votes purpose of taking care of the members. The second definition is the church is made up of pilgrims called by God, bound by Christ, with Jesus as the leader for the purpose of continuing his ministry to the least, the last, and the lost. Got that? Okay. If we follow the first definition, it's easier. We're a voluntary association. We just here because we get something out of it. We take care of one another. We have rules and leaders. In votes. If you don't like what's happening, you walk away. As we say in the ministry, you vote with your feet. That's the way we often function as a church. Not just our church, any church. And if you follow the first definition, the scripture today makes no sense at all. Why would you want to go talk to somebody who you're mad at? Why would you go talk to somebody who hurt your feelings? The easiest thing is to walk away. In fact, it sounds more Christian. Instead of fighting, Let's just part ways. We won't have anything to do with anybody, with any, that group, that person anymore. And if the church offends us, we're going to walk away from the church. We'll find another church. Or even more likely, we will be unchurched. That's the category now. It's, the, uh, uh, it's called de-churched. People who used to be part of the church, but they've been offended. They have some kind of story to tell about why they'll never go back. I have heard hundreds of those stories, either reading them or somebody telling them. Something deep within them was hurt, and they'll never go back. Why in the world? Would you go talk to each other? Why in the world would you put yourself through that torture? If we have the first, second definition, then there's the scriptures make sense. If we are pilgrims on the way, what made me think about what I thought about was a wagon train heading west. 
when you have the wagon train heading west, you're all dependent upon each other. You don't care if you have differences of lifestyle. We don't care if you have differences of opinion. We don't have to care if you have differences of ability or, or resources. It doesn't matter. You're all heading in the same direction. And you have a better chance of surviving and doing accomplishing it if you travel together. If that is true for the church, then it makes sense to follow the church. Because we have something bigger than ourselves that we're trying to accomplish. And anything that gets in the way of that mission needs to be dealt with. Okay, they have a plan. Now here it's important to know what comes before and come after. The scriptures are always important for their context. Sometimes they're just stories that are inserted, but sometimes the context is so important. Why did Matthew put this right here? He put this right here because the first right before that is the story of the lost sheep. When everybody matters, everyone is, is looked for, everyone you seek everyone who's lost to bring them back to the fold. That's important to remember when you're talking about this procedure. And the same right afterwards is how many times you forgive somebody 70 times, seven times. In other words, you lose count. Forgiveness and unity are the purpose. Now, with that in mind, we look at what they're supposed to do. If someone sins against you, and this is not just I had a difference of opinion, or I did something I didn't like, or they said something I didn't like. This is when it violates and harms you, and it violates the will of God. And you take it to the person in private, you talk it out, you have to be willing to be vulnerable, you have to be willing to listen, you have to be willing to share your feelings, you have to try to put that back together. And if that doesn't work, then you take one or two with you. That does a couple of things. One, it provides a third person to be a sounding board to reflect on what the two, the conflict between the two is, so they can be an objective third party who can reflect on what's going on. The other thing is that if something you also affirm the damage is done, it's not just quite hurt that other people in the church have noticed and you reflect that this that important. Now if that doesn't work, you go to the church. I've heard stories about that. A lot of times it doesn't go well. But what it's saying is that it's so important it's doing damage church. It's inhibiting our mission. It needs to be healed. And if that doesn't work, treat them as tax collectors. Anybody here like tax collectors? <laughs> so what does Jesus do to be a tax collector? He loves them. He hangs out with them. He includes them. He ministers to them. He talks. They become endurers of the ministry to recipients of the ministry. You don't kick them out. You say, we're going to have special care for you. It's easier to be in a voluntary association of people, like-minded people whose purpose is to take care of each other, to take care of ourselves, and I'm sure that our needs are met. And if there's a conflict, we just take a vote. Or a leader takes a stance. Or we have rules on the discipline. But if we're a pilgrim people, if we're here not just to be for ourselves, to enjoy each other's company, 
which I hope we do, but to be in ministry outside to other people. The church is a unique place where the rule is love. I haven't seen any other organization where the rule is love, where the rule is forgiveness, where the rule is ministry. Where the people that we're aimed towards is one of the ones outside. It makes a difference which way you look at the church being. What is our purpose? Now, you have a one. I want a one page paper on the topic of the two definitions. That's right. Really <laughs> Just kidding. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we hear the gospel, as we hear Jesus speaking to us from 2,000 years ago, we uh, feel God's presence and we affirm our faith. Let's be worship the affirmation with number 881 in the back of the hymnal and we invite you to stand so the world knows what we stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and stood at the right hand. God the Father Almighty, from thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Well, I'll attempt the year 97. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Here's what I want to say. All right. Uh, our last hymn is uh, uh, number 672. God be with you till we meet again. <laughs> Thank you. 